That's another class. We won't do that now. Right now we're going to talk about potting soil. Hey, you know what? I blew it because we should have actually incorporated into our break a walk over to the compost site. But we'll do that later, okay? We're going to walk over to the compost site because we have a couple different qualities of compost there. But a key thing to know is if you want to make your own potting soil, it is only as good as the compost you use, okay? If you use your own homemade compost and you didn't do a very good job, you may not get germination. You may have complex acids and alcohols. Ed, you want to get a share? Rocco brought you one. Thank you very much, Rocco. Those complex alcohols and acids will inhibit or stop the germination of the plants. You may also have just not gotten that up to heat up very well. And if you don't know your, your cotyledons very, mel very well, you may not be able to tell your plants from your weeds. You know? So you have to be careful about using your own compost. I'm not saying don't do it. But I guess I'd recommend that if you are using your own compost, you do a germination test in it, or a bioassay is another term they use for that. Okay? And classically, bioassays are done with cress. People know cress, curly cress, because it's a very rapid germinator and beans because they're very fussy germinators. So people will oftentimes do two bioassays of their compost before they use it in potting soil. Or if anything else that they have any questions about, right? People actually have done bioassays to see if their manures had that ter those terrible herbicides in them. You know about those herbicides that are active at six parts per billion? Mm. Um, and if you, if, you get, if you use that manure in your garden, your tomatoes all look like they've been hit by herbicides. You can test your manure to see if you have that by trying to grow beans or cress, and if they don't have the response, then you can be sure, be pretty sure that you don't have that in, your, in that manure. So, how you do a bioassay is pretty simple. Once again, count out your seeds, do it so it's easily divisible by 10 to keep the math easy, right? And then just plant them in the compost or whatever else you're questioning, and then count how many come up. And pay attention to what they look like when they come up. If they don't look like they should, that might be the problem. Because they might germinate, but they might be convoluted or have lesions or be yellowing or something like that. All those are indications that you probably shouldn't use that for your potting soil. You know? I've ever sunk, and I mean this literally, literally, because I think it's, there's really lousy stuff out there, to using black cow and mushroom compost to make my potting soil. And it worked okay. Why I say sunk is because... My experience is that most brands of those, um, and I shouldn't have said the brand name actually. I don't, I'm not going to claim the Black Cow itself, but similar to Black Cow, and maybe Black Cow, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Or at least that's what I'm saying right now. Um, it's uh, fine. <laughs> well, I'm looking at that. Hey, hey, if you, if you want, Pat, just restate and say I've sunk to using commercial whatever and say it without the brand. If you want to restate, and I'll just I've cut sunk it. to using commercial compost, composted manures, and mushroom compost. And why I say sunk is because what I've discovered is the a lot of the varieties I've tried to use, I really questioned their, what was in them. I mean, it was clear to me that they had, they had cut it with sand and pine bark, you know, um, and that's just to make, to make more money on it. And then they have an analysis, right? I mean, the composters I know that sell their compost do not put an analysis on their compost because it is so hard to consistently get a certain level of nitrogen, phosphorus, and whatnot. So you have to wonder for these huge quantities that they're saying they have that on. I mean, they get fined if they get if they test that and it doesn't have it on it. Wouldn't they be tempted to use a little bit of commercial fertilizer to ensure that it hit that? You know. And so I just kind of question that. You know, it's like maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but I don't trust it. You know. On the other hand, it's allowed in organic, as far as I know and because they're assuming that they're telling the truth and if you can't find anything else I've mixed the two together and used that for my compost for potting soil and it has worked well enough. If I can get better compost I'm way happier. You know, until I discovered macaroon compost whereupon I no longer even bother to make my own compost because it is so darn good um, and it's cost effective for me to use it. Um, until I got hold of macaroon I made compost just for my most important use of compost was to make my potting soil. 
and I made sure my quality was good enough to give me great, great potting soil. You know, and that's what that article I gave you for was. And indeed, that was a perfect cycle for me because I would make my compost in the late winter, early spring, which is kind of out of the cycle I recommend for home gardeners. Your best time to make compost is going to be when you do your fall cleanup because you have your most bulk. You know, but I did it then because I was always growing commercial and I was willing to go get horse manure and stuff because I was going to focus on hitting the heat. I use the heat to grow my seedlings. You know, I have Greg, Greg helped me and Tom Trout helped me and I, I have a three bin system that's block and insulated and it really held the heat so I could grow my seedlings using compost heat. And to be sure that I kept my seedling war seedlings warm, I made sure my compost stayed really hot. And to keep it going, I had to turn it. So I made sure it was evenly hot everywhere. And then, obviously, I'm doing it so I can grow my seedlings. Well, I can't make my compost and grow my seedlings at the same time, right? So the compost I made one year sat for a year before I used it. And that's the way to ensure quality, right? Because the aging and the biological processes really mellow it, you know? So I always had great compost for my, for my seedlings, and I made great potting soil. We're going to show you how to do that here. But I don't do it anymore because macaroni is so easy and so darn good, usually. I have to warn you. Macaroon occasionally has quality issues. And I encourage you that if you run into a quality issue with Macaroon compost, give them the feedback. They will respond. They will take care of you and they will hear it and pay attention. They're just maxed out. And that's where the quality issues come in. They sometimes are so maxed out that something happens. I mean, somebody was complaining there was some gravel in a few bags. I'm sure somebody was just working too fast and didn't scoop the stuff up quite right, you know. Um, occasionally I've seen a, you know, I've seen a cut in a bag and there's some grass growing out of it. That's not supposed to happen, you know. But I took a picture and sent it along to Macamaro and, you know, I got some money back and, you know, they, they, they made sure to cover their compost. What happens is you can make great compost. If you don't cover it, the weed seeds are blowing around and they can blow back in the perfect compost. So you have to take good care of it that way. And we'll visit the compost site and talk about that a little bit as we walk over and walk back and look at some different compost. All right, so... Right now, we're going to actually make potting soil. We have the ingredients. We have peat. We have perlite. Um, we have compost. Rocco, can you get the, the wheelbarrow compost out of number three? It's right there. All right. Step out of your path. Right, man. <laughs> we're aligned. We're a team, man. That's right. All right. Thank you, sir. So we're going to, we're going to put those together in the right proportions and mix them, okay? Um, a word about using perlite and vermiculite. There was a brand of vermiculite that was out there that had asbestos in it. In fact, the company that was making it got sued um, because a lot of people got very sick because of it. Um, when you use any of those things, you will feel it. And that's your biofeedback. You don't want to feel it. Okay? So either wear a mask or what, you know, I think Jeremy figured out, I was it you, somebody here figured out the most elegant, perfect solution. Water it down good before you work with it. And it holds the dust down, and that's the issue. As long as the dust isn't coming up, there's no problem. Once it's in the potting soil, you're not going to breathe it unless you really don't know how to take care of your seedlings because they're always going to be wet. And so it's not coming off it, you know. It's not an issue. But the handling, if you try to handle and i got to confess, I've done it one too many times. I'm in a hurry, and I, oh, I'll just hold my breath. Can't do it. You know, you're going to be coughing before you're done handling that stuff. So just take care of yourselves, and don't, don't treat it mildly because... No one right now is saying that perlite or vermiculite cause cancer, but I wouldn't guarantee you that that's not true. You know, that could it could be come down the road that they're going to say, "Oh, you know that perlite stuff." I mean, you know, nobody thought that asbestos caused cancer either. You know, it takes a long time for some of those things to show up. So, take treat it with care. Um, do you have the recipe on here? I got this recipe, by the way, from Atra. People know about Atra. Uh, applied technology transfer to rural areas. It was a government-funded institution. They're kind of making, they're limping along on their own right now, thanks to the brilliant um, solution to our economic woes called drastic budget cutting. They have been defunded. Um, it's a, a really stupid thing. It's really an incredible resource. If you use them, please send them money. Please support them. What is it called? ATRA, Applied Technology Transfer to Rural Areas. You will go to that website and you will be amazed at the information that's available there. And I looked up potting soil back in 2000 and got this recipe and it's never failed me. So the recipe's right there. You see it. But people understand where we say that you can use 
one pipe perlite, one pipe vermiculite are two parts of either. You know what that means? It doesn't matter if you use perlite or vermiculite. Maybe best practice is to mix them. And that's really what they called for. But I quickly discovered that this potting soil worked in ways that were not discernibly different to me if I used all perlite or all vermiculite. What's the difference? Um, I don't know if we have vermiculite to show you here. We're going to use all perlite. Vermiculite is, is expanded mica. Okay. Perlite, I'm pretty sure, is expanded um, volcanic rock, but it might be expanded clay. Okay. Perlite looks like styrofoam. Vermiculite is that silvery stuff. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah. That's the difference. They both function similarly in that they, they give bulking. You know? Vermiculite holds more water. You know? So if you were using it in in potting soils that didn't have a fair amount of compost and peat, it might be better to use vermiculite. Uh, it would hold a little bit more water. But the truth is these are compost based potting soils. Compost holds 10 times its weight in water. We have one-fifth compost in this mix. Your problem is overwatering and getting them to not, you know, not be too soggy. It's not going to be hard to keep them moist. But right here I'm seeing a couple cells that need to be watered <laughs> as I say that. Um, what I'd say is if you're using your own compost, you'll see ours is, we have a, the compost that you're going to see was made from pure horse manure where um, the people who manage the horses were very careful to just pick the poop up and leave the urine soaked manure aside and then eventually that manure, that urine soaked bedding is put in a separate pile we hope to grow mushrooms on but we don't put it in the compost. If you're making your own compost if you're getting really 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 woody manure you might want to also supplement with something like worm castings because you might have a bad carbon nitrogen ratio. The way to tell if you're using good compost besides doing the bioassay is to use North Carolina's incredibly wonderful deal on testing. Your soil tests are free. Your waste analysis costs four bucks and within a few days the results are online. So you do a waste analysis and you look at for your purposes for making potting soil your two key factors are your soluble salts okay um, and actually I'm forgetting right now what's high and what's low but you can easily ask them. You can, you know, contact them and say are those, and they'll oftentimes tell you. Soluble salts are very high. Um, they have to be way, way high to not be fine for, for potting soil because you're diluting them so much. So they're probably going to be fine. But your carbon nitrogen ratio cannot be high. And indeed the test will confuse you that way. I just was looking at one that I tested it to find out why the compost wasn't working. The carbon nitrogen ratio was 19 to 1. Okay. 19 to 1 is four points above 15 to 1, where at most nutrients are tied up. If you have a carbon nitrogen ratio of 15 to 1, most nutrients are not available to plants, which means it's terrible compost for potting soil. You know. So you want to test it and have it below 15. Okay. Um, I never did that for years and did fine, but I was making good compost. I was lucky. You know. Um, I would test it. I would recommend testing it if you're gonna if you're gonna use your own compost for potting soil. Um, you could also, if you're into saving money, you could buy macaroni compost to make potting soil, and you'd save money. I save time and buy the potting soil. Um, it's not that expensive, especially. And, and buy the what? The right. macaroni. The macaroni. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you are done with this class. And now, full disclosure, I got Troy's greenhouse to carry it, right? My friend John Nilsson developed mackerel compost for money. He got paid to do it. But he, he cut a deal when he did that he always gets a little piece of it, a small percentage for every bag that he helps to get sold. Because he taught me about it and I sell it. He gets money for it. Last year, I spent a bunch of time putting together a tractor trailer load for Troy's greenhouse. I put it on my own credit card. I did a bunch of book work, right? At the end of it, John said, Pat, you have to get paid. I said, John, I'm just doing this a way to carry it. He gave me a couple hundred bucks. I might make money again from this. I'm recommending it. Full disclosure, I might make money from this recommendation. <laughs> but if I didn't get the money, I'd still make the same recommendation. You know? Why I did that is I wanted... What happened was I taught um, in Yancey County at Mainland Community College. I kept telling people, get mackerel. They said, well, what does Troy carry? Troy's carry. I said, he doesn't carry it, but ask him. Maybe he will. 
didn't take but a couple classes of weights, said, you know, I better start carrying that stuff. But really, I had to make it happen because it's, it's not in his supply loop, you know. I'm looking forward to the day that I don't have to be involved. But I may make a little bit of money. I still recommend that if you're sold on McEnroe, you can see how these seedlings look. They're all grown on McEnroe. If you're sold on it, you live anywhere near here, your best deal is going to be to contact Wade Troy's Greenhouse and say, put me down for this many bags. And then you might, you could probably even prevail upon me for my tiny little percentage. Um, but actually, just going to want it to happen. If I'm going through there with enough notice, I might be able to load them in my vehicle and meet you in Asheville. You know? Um, and you will save a hunk of change. You'll get a much better price on it. You know? It's worth every penny, or even if you go to Fifth Season and buy it. Or you can take a drive up to Yancey County and spend your money there. Spend your way there and check out Choice Greenhouse. It's a lovely drive. Um, you can continue on to Spruce Pine. There's even a really fam famous, fancy restaurant there now. Knife and Fork. They're winning all these prizes, you know. Um, Galen Corazon from, um, Green, from Green Toe Ground is one of their cooks now. It's, you know... The world is happening up there, you know. They came to our gym last night. He's a pretty good drummer, too. Pretty good drummer, too. Listen to that, you know. Um, okay. So, we're going to now go out, get those ingredients, and make potting soap. I mean... This is my 